Hey crafters, Big D here, and this week we are starting a series making a huge fortress for your table for wargaming. Uh, you could use it in role playing. It's futuristic. It's sci-fi. I actually am basing this very loosely on a old kit that was done by Forge World, the Imperial Fortress. Uh, Spiky Bits had a video up for it. It's a massive, massive resin kit. And I was like, that's beautiful, but how do I do that without it costing an arm and a leg? And the answer is foam board. So uh, we're going to go over this project. Each piece of this project is going to be modular, so they'll all fit together. Um, but they're a little complicated in and of itself. So the first couple of videos are just be making these, the basic battlement walls. So the first video we're going to have today is going to be just how to construct the exterior, how to build this basic structure. And then we'll do a video on the detailing and the paint job and all that. So today we're just going to talk about how do we build the basic structure that will end up as the walls for our fortress. So that in mind, let's hit the table. All right, crafters. So the first part of this project is we need some foam board. Now I've got tons and tons and tons of scraps. So uh, I'm a little lucky there because uh, of all the stuff I make and all the way I work with things. But you're going to want to get foam board. Your first part, uh, first part of this project, main construction piece of this is all going to be foam board. If you go get the ready board from the Dollar Tree, the easy stuff, uh, perfectly acceptable. But here's the thing to remember, we're not peeling the paper. We want this paper edge here um, because we're not, we don't want the foam exposed. We just want the strength of this thing. So I'm actually using regular standard quality foam board. Um, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut it in six inch strips. So it's exactly six inches wide. Uh, the length's not going to matter because we're going to cut lengths, but you want to make sure you, you, do these, you square them up. Uh, make sure they're perfectly square and make sure they're exactly six inches across. I actually sat with a T-square and uh, with an actual T-square, not this, but the Arpenter square. But I went through and I made sure this was six inches all the way across because we really want this to be nice and even. So you got your six inch length and then we're going to chop it or we're going to use using a fresh blade. Remember when you're cutting foam board you want to use a fresh blade uh, and you want to use a sharp blade. So uh, you want to make sure these cuts are nice and clean because we want a nice clean edge. So we're going to be cutting some strips from this. We're going to be cutting for each piece of wall that we make we're cutting a number of sections. We're going to be cutting one piece at three quarters of an inch. We're going to be cutting one piece at one inch. We're going to be cutting one at two inches, two and a half, five and five and a quarter. So I'll go over that again. It's going to be, note this down, you want for each piece of wall, you want three quarters, one inch, two inch, two and a half inch, five inch, and five and a quarter inches. So cut those strips out and come back. All right, crafters. So as you can see, like I said, we're cutting off pieces. We got one three quarter inch strip, one one inch strip, one two inch strip, one two and a half inch, one five, and one five and a quarter. So we're going to have to make a couple of simple adjustments to them. Our five and a quarter, you're going to want to chamfer this upper edge or this lower edge, I should say. This is the bottom edge. You're going to want to bring it in. It doesn't have to be exact, but you're going to want to take the corner off 
so that it lays at a little bit of an angle without being lifted in the front. This doesn't have to be exact because the most of this is going to be the underside. We just want to make sure that the front lays forward just a little bit. And you see what I mean when we get it assembled. So you're going to want to take, and let me put up the camera so you can see, you're just going to want to take like a 45 degree angle. You don't even need a 45, you just want to really just take that corner off so that it can sit back a little bit of an angle. Now, now we're going to assemble the wall. You're going to take your one inch strip. You can use hot glue, you can use uh, tacky glue. I'm going to use hot glue for speed purposes um, and because I want this to not take all day to dry. I want to get with this assembly quick. Uh, that's the beauty of this project. It's really designed to be quick. So take the 5 inch and marry them up at the bottom so that they make a 90 degree angle. This does not need to be clean if you want to reinforce this joint feel free to do so this does not need to be clean this piece will be out of sight now the second thing we're going to do is we're going to do the other half of the front which we're going to take a bead hot glue and along that chamfered edge we're going to run a bead of hot glue again And then bearing it up there and then leaning it up so that it is at an angle and matches up with our upright end. And then we're going to let this cool. Once it cools, we're going to take this top edge here and we're going to trim off the excess of this so we make a flat surface here. I'm going to let this cool and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is nice and cool, nice and firm, firm seal. So you'll notice that the side that we put in the upright is completely flat and the side on the angle obviously is a slight angle. We want to chamfer it, but we want to chamfer it pretty exact because we want a nice flat surface. So what we're going to do is using the flat board, we're going to use that as our guide for how we're going to cut this upper board. So. All we're doing is just drawing across the surface. Until we have a nice flat top. And then once we have a flat top, we're going to run another bead of hot glue right across it. And we're going to take that three quarter inch strip and centering it on the seam between the two pieces, we're just going to put it out. Now we have our primary exterior of the wall. 
Next, we're going to put in the walkways. Now, there's a lower walkway and an upper walkway. You're going to want to measure the upper walkway before you install the lower walkway. So, from the bottom of the surface, you're going to want to measure four inches up. And you want to make sure that you know where that four inch line is. So that line is four inches from the ground. We're going to glue the two inch wide board so that that line is the bottom seam of the board. So again, just a quick bead of hot glue. And then press it down. And if you want to reinforce it, it's always good to run a bead, in this case in the bottom edge, underneath. And we just want to make sure that comes up nice and flat. Now, while you're waiting for this to cool, you're going to get some standard craft sticks or popsicle sticks. And I've taken these and with a pair of wire cutters, a pair of heavy choppers, I have clipped off the bottom. And what I mean by clipping off the bottom, I went just where the ends of the curves are, I've chopped it flat. So these are, as long as they can be, minus the bottom curve. And for each piece of wall, you're going to want three of these. We're now going to take our floorboard and we're going to run a bead and we're going to marry that right up. Now, if you want to put a secondary bead, you're going to need to put it very, very fine, very, very small, and only right in the seam. And once this all cools, you have a very sturdy very sturdy piece of terrain. All right, our structure is nice and cool. Everything's put together. We're now going to start putting in some of the supports on the inside, and that's what these sticks were for. We're going to take a small dab of glue and just put it right on the edge of the railing there, and then put a small dab right up on the bottom of the craft stick. Now I've got three nice support beams and once these cool will actually act as support so that nothing bows but also make this aesthetic make this look more realistic so with the main structure complete we're going to get some cereal box and cut it to cover these openings but 
we've got to have a way to make these pieces of wall cling to the next one to them. For that, we're going to use some magnets. All right, so now you've seen the construction, and next week we're going to pick it right back up where we left off about how we're putting those magnets in place, how we're setting them up, and how we're going to continue to detail this piece to make this huge tabletop set of terrain. So, be back with us next week, and we're looking forward to you. Remember, our goal is to epic your game and epic your table. Game on.